Uh, Leaf Rob Combat Sport here with Jack Cooper. Um, fought tonight for the British title, um, the ICL British title. I uh, would just like to say congratulations on the win tonight. Um, very solid performance by yourself. Um, how do you feel after winning the title? Yeah, yeah, it's nice. It's a lovely belt. Um, everything went pretty smooth. I got the stoppage, which is always nice as well. So, there. Um, so just a little before the fight, going into the fight, what was the game plan? Um, yeah. And did it, obviously it's for a British title, did it add a bit more pressure? Yeah, in a fashion, in a fashion. I um, I beat Jack before, so we were just trying to dictate the pace, dictate the bit of ring control, um, the distance. Every, everything went smooth. I got him with an elbow early on, which opened all his eye, and then from there just escalated rapidly. And, um, Got the win, got the stoppage. Yeah, because we noticed in round one, um, you're catching with a lot of body kicks. Yeah. And yeah. you seem to control the ring, well, especially the centre of the ring. Yeah. I'm um, yeah. in round one. Well, that was the was the game plan was to control it from round one. Yeah, yeah, nice firm start. Okay. Um, and then also going into round two, um, that's where you cut Jack. Um, with what was an elbow you caught you yeah, him with? Left up elbow to start with. with elbow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing we did notice and we did like the most was the um, uppercut combo which you did. Um, is that something you've been drilling in the gym or is that just something that you do? Yeah, no, we've worked, we've worked like a bit with the uppercut, power shots and then even evading and landing and finishing on the uppercut, so it's, it's nice to finally get them in. Yeah, because he did it once and we, you know, we noticed it and then we noticed he did it a second time and a third time. And it was always the uppercut yeah. and you always finished it with the knee. Yeah, um, yeah. Was that more just to draw his attention so you block high and then... Yeah, he was, um, he was trying to pin the long guard and he had his hand on the side of his head on his temple. Uppercut was just landing perfect, finish on a big knee. It's always a nice big score for the pain. <laughs> um, and then for yourself in the corner, um, you had the game plan. Um, was there any point during that you had to adjust it or was it just everything was going to the team? No, everything, everything was working sweetly. Um, like I was saying, with the, 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 the uppercut, I mean, it, it is a big shot um, because of the um, rule structure in Thai boxing. Um, you need to see visible effect, and like sometimes with with, with the straight shots, what they can kind of cover up, yeah. maybe hit the guard, maybe slot through. But fighters have strong necks, so they so they're used to this kind of forward movement mm -hmm. all the time. Like angling, angling with that uppercut, kind of peeling, peeling the, the guy's head back. So it's a, it's a really big kind of obvious score. And then also linking that together with the boxing as soon as the head starts getting peeled back, the chin's up in the air, they start coming up, they start covering up, covering up high and hook it back down to the body. So it's like up, up and down and exploiting the scoring structure um, and, and, and taking advantage of this kind of overcompensation with the guard. Okay. Um, the one thing in the sport that um, I don't think is emphasised enough is the, the IQ behind it. Um, there's one thing to throw combinations that look beautiful, uh, but like you just explained now, the reasoning behind it, the point scoring, um, almost manipulating your opponent, knowing what he's going to block or how he's going to block. You mentioned he was using the long guard yeah, um, yeah. quite a lot. Um, so like I said before at the start of the interview, um, you threw the uppercut combo with once, and then once you see it working, um, was that was that like your go-to just to keep throwing it until yeah, you yeah. adjust these blocking or? Was, um I remember hitting the uppercut hard, uh, left hand, right hand both through the fight. And when he was forcing that long guard, he was, and then I was getting mixing it up with a pull down, so he, everything was a bit uneven for, the, for, his, for his thought patterns. And it, it, it did it when it worked well. And then after the cut, um, he was taken to the referee, talking to the medical to like, see the cut. Yeah. At that point, um, was there a little pre-celebration? Did you think that yeah, in a the doctor's gonna in a fashion. call the fight off and yeah, obviously? Yeah. Um, declare you as the winner. Yeah, yeah, it's always always a little thought in your head when you see a bit of blood. Oh, yeah. Get this waved off quick. quick no, win. No, I mean, even, yeah, yeah. even even with even with a little bit of blood, but that was, I mean, that was <laughs> that was gushing like pretty hard. Um, and if it, if the tails were turned and that was that was my fight, I'd, I'd, I'd have been throwing the towel in it a lot sooner. Um, I mean, I think it took quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of punishment in there that was. Kind of unnecessary. Um, I mean, it, it was. A, I mean, he's a, he's a tough guy. We knew, yeah. we knew that. We knew that it was going to be a tough fight as well. Um, but the the flow of the fight and, the, and stuff. There was, there was. I don't think there was at any point where he was in it. 
everyone in here any danger I don't any kind of yeah, the towel was thrown in the round. Well, the towel was thrown in round four. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, like you said, it was. Yeah. Um, this yeah. was, was going to come at some point yeah. on the stoppage. Um, when you did see the towel, was that at that point you just knew? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think at the end of it, you lifted them up. Was that more just a, a game plan worked? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, we always start having a, having a look and, and always trying to try and change. Um, change the strategy so I mean again come back come back to his depth of Jack's depth of experience um, and is it he hasn't got like one thing that he'll do every single fight yeah. he's not, he's not like, fame for, for having like one strategy or anything um, because we keep on changing it sometimes on the front foot sometimes on the back foot sometimes it's, it's camp kicking sometimes it's boxing sometimes it's elbowing um, and having this like multifaceted approach means it, it's, it's very hard to kind of pin, pin, pin it down or, 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 be, or be productive okay so with the win tonight you've now got a British title um, yes. I believe a few months ago you fought on the Muay Thai Grand Prix you won the European title yes. um, is there any hints of a world title coming up anytime soon um, that you can hope so. It'd be nice. that you can nice. mention? Maybe week Get twice. The <laughs> um, but is that something that's on your list of um, accomplishments within the sport? Is a world title yeah, yeah, um, at some stage? Okay. I mean, in terms of winning titles, when you go back to your gym, what does that do to to motivate the other fighters within the gym? Does that make them want to train harder? Yeah, um, it is. It's nice to present. Um, more so to the younger ones, because obviously the, the, thing is, the thing is amazing, the thing is the best thing. Yeah. Um, and it, even all the adults in the gym, that's, that's the same. If, if they fight, then they know the importance of it all and they can see the work behind it, so it's all appreciated. Everyone's in good spirit when you're back for the title. And then obviously, as a trainer, um, when you go back to the gym, um, you know, I believe that Jack's an example to, to up and coming fighters, that if you do put the, the hours into the gym, uh, you can achieve this and obviously yeah. much more within the sport yeah. um, I guess I'll get it how would you I mean how do you use that to motivate the other fighters is it a um, I mean it, it, see because the the, the relationship that, we're, that we've got with um, Jack lives up in Middlesbrough okay. uh, Chopty Chopty's based in York so it's about a 45 minute to an hour's drive between um, Jack teaches at Contender Gym um, and he also trains down down at Trump D as well, so he's, he's, he's doing teaching and he's training himself and stuff like that. So he's kind of living that lifestyle. Um, but see, seeing the seeing the, the the hard work that's that's required, the graft that's required. Um, I, mean, I mean, coming from from myself, I'll, yeah. I'll kind of look to try and inspire that. But a lot, like a, a lot of my fights were before. Facebook and <laughs> stuff, so. you know, you, you know, uh, uh, what's it called? It um, an Instagram fire they say these days. Well, That's uh, the yeah. phrase that's been coined. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, so um, uh, there's a, there's a lot of a lot of like my fight experiences is is kind of out there. So sometimes the like the, the younger kids they, they see they see the the old guy teaching and they kind of forget that he's had a fight career as Before. well because they only ever see me as a coach. Um, but then kind of bringing people on, say right, okay, if I can inspire like the, the old fighters, which then inspire the, the, the younger fighters coming through. I mean, like, it's a, it's a lifestyle. I'm just, I'm just saying, saying today, I've had, I've had like two weekends off since since June. Um, I've, I've fights out every every weekend. Um, tomorrow I've, I've got like five guys on the, the show in Bishop Auckland um, from. I think the youngest guy is seven through to, through to 19. So um, we've got, got another army of fighters coming through like the next generation and that. So it's the Christmas have cancelled for you this year? Um, <laughs> not, not at the moment. No, no. Um, I'd say some, some of the guys, a uh, um, couple, couple, of, couple of the guys are um, fighting on 1FC and stuff like that. Okay. Like early in January. Um, Haggard is fighting well, Tanya again, so yeah. I think that's on the 10th of, 10th of January. 10th of January. Um, so, 
the, those guys have got the Christmas cards a little bit. Mm. We can enjoy it for now. But I mean, as, even as a coach, um, how do you feel when you see your fighters, I guess, um, accomplish some of their dreams within the sport? Um, it's, it's good, it's good, it's inspiring. It, it, I mean, it, like, is it, is it, as an ex-fire, you, you always have that itch, you always, you always want to, you're always looking to kind of fulfil that. Um, and and to, be, to, be, to be part of Jack's journey and, and all, all, all my other fighters' journeys is, 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 is part of my motivation. I, and then I kind of reflect that energy back into, back into my coaching. I use ex examples of, of where the, the guys fight. Um, in classes, so that so that if they're kind of uh, recapping or, or have, have a look back at the fight footage, they can then see these the, the drills that we do in class in action. So it's like this, like a method in the madness. Well, thank you very much for your time. Um, so congratulations, uh, congratulations again on the win, yeah, um, and you know, enjoy the next couple of weeks. So hopefully, um, you get a call from one from one FC. Yeah, that'd be the one. That'd be the one. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much, man. Thank you. Oh, thank you.